Let me start the day with some observations and reflections about this past year. I'm sure you all have many of your own. Here are some of mine. Now more than ever, we need to stay connected because in many ways, we really can move faster when we're working together. And this conference is about getting moving again post-pandemic. Over the past year or more, we've found new ways to keep connected and keep moving through tools like Teams or Zoom. We understand the importance of empathy as we all balance the personal and the professional. By working from home this long, we've met each other's children and pets, creating a personal connection that can be powerful in how we work together. And here's the thing, we aren't going back to where we were. Consumer shopping behavior is forever changed. For example, we're shopping more online, demanding safety, more convenience, and consolidating store trips. And fulfillment options like curbside pickup and buy online pickup in store quickly exploded in the popularity. In fact, last March, we saw e-commerce and dynamic fulfillment transform retail seemingly overnight, revealing digital leaders and laggards. Companies, large and small, change products, business models, channel strategies, and fulfillment options to meet the shopper in a quarantine state. Although this cycle was triggered by a global health pandemic, it really resembles other inflection points of the past, like the introduction of the PC, the rise of mobile, and the growth of the cloud. We're now in a new business cycle of leadership, collaboration, innovation, and the digital transformation of data and technology. As we think about where we've been and where we're headed, there are three topics I wanna to cover. The first is data management and digital transformation. In March, 2020, two things became absolutely essential. When selling products shifted online, it caused a radical separation between those running a website versus an e-commerce business. There's a big difference, and that became brutally evident for many companies. Every business had to help customers find and buy the right product and then provide timely delivery with accurate tracking, all through automation given quarantine labor. Secondly, fulfilling orders became much more dynamic. For example, at curbside or home delivery. Serving the COVID shopper required a level of inventory availability, visibility, and accuracy that many companies suddenly realized they lacked. These companies didn't know what products were where and in what quantities, and this was absolutely essential. Without good, precise visibility to their inventory, both in stores and in the distribution center, companies really couldn't sell despite a strong digital marketing presence. In some organizations, this surge in online selling and dynamic fulfillment exposed what was not automated or visible. Companies investing in data, technology, and an agile fulfillment infrastructure perform better and remain well positioned for the future. These are the businesses updating store level inventory based on real-time sales to make sure they can sell to the last item and fulfill a promise to the shopper. Autonomous retail, which includes automation for picking inventory and fulfillment in a contactless manner, also played a critical role in meeting essential needs. It removed friction, it increased service levels, and it accelerated the pace for e-commerce. Right now, this automation is critical given widespread labor shortages. The lessons we learned during this time must now guide our investments in digitization and e-commerce. So let's move on to the next topic, acceleration. We've seen shorter time horizons for innovation across industries. Some sources say that the pandemic accelerated the digital transformation for online commerce by five to 10 years. We can think about speed across four dimensions that are all linked. Decision-making. We saw companies turbocharging their decision-making, making timely decisions amid uncertainty and unprecedented challenges is now a survival skill. The second, risk-taking. We learned that the only way to move forward was by taking calculated, bigger risks. There were simply no other options. Third, investments. We observed that companies that invested in data management systems and technology over the past few years were able to absorb the volatility in demand quickly while still serving their customers. And finally, agility. We learned that our internal processes for cross-functional collaboration and rapid implementation 
needed to change. Most companies experimented. Some failed. Many now find that their product mix, manufacturing, and supply chain distribution looks very different from the past. Nothing exemplifies acceleration better than COVID-19 vaccines. Each of the dimensions we just reviewed, decision-making, risk-taking, investments, and agility, contributed to record-breaking speed to market. If we achieve this level of acceleration for public health and safety, we can do the same for other industry needs, like food safety, information accuracy, retail automation, circular economy, and finally, sustainability. Now let's talk about the third observation, collaboration. The pandemic prompted a redefinition of collaboration. A sense of urgency forced us all to absorb, adapt, and respond at a pace and scale like never before. We had to look for new ways to work together to address a more resilient, efficient supply chain. Collaboration has become a business imperative in an interdependent, interoperable global supply chain. But what does it take to collaborate successfully? First, any collaboration requires an exchange of data or information, whether the partnership is one-to-one, -one, one to few, or one to many. And that data needs to be standardized, accurate, and complete so that it can be verified, trusted, and shared with trading partners. This will allow all parties to integrate systems and processes that enable them to identify solutions, make decisions quickly, and execute flawlessly. Quality data doesn't happen without collaboration. Second, while legacy collaboration across industry verticals like healthcare or retail grocery will continue, we believe we need to expand our portfolio of options for how we collaborate and partner. There are countless examples of collaboration that were born during the pandemic. Consider dining app OpenTable. They partnered with a variety of supermarket chains and other businesses so that customers could reserve a visit to the store. And that collaboration made it possible for people to safely and predictably shop for essential items. And this collaboration happened quickly. The open table example is just one of many partnerships we see at GS1 US. We believe these smaller scale alliances will represent a bigger share of our industry collaboration efforts going forward. Our sponsored pilots provide opportunities to implement GS1 standards and leverage our ability as a neutral body to convene stakeholders like brand owners, retailers, providers, distributors, and even regulators to work together in a one-to-one -one or one-to-few framework. We need to expand our definition for what industry collaboration really means. For example, small pilots to identify the intersection of new technology, standards, and optimize business processes in developing areas like retail automation, circular economy, and digital identity. Not all forms of collaboration work for all companies or industries, given resource constraints and time pressures. By expanding our approach, we can meet all stakeholders of all sizes where they are, given the resources they have. And that flexibility makes each of us more innovative at a time when it matters most. Given the circumstances of the last 18 months and what we've learned about what works and candidly what doesn't, the one thing we know for sure, because we say it all the time, is that change is inevitable. And to compete and thrive, we need to be flexible, agile, and willing to adapt. And what we're beginning to understand now is that we'll have to be even more willing to change how we think about what's ahead. For years, we've all speculated and projected about how to deal with change based on our collective experiences trying to find and develop the best strategies and practices for moving forward. The challenge has been not so much our willingness to embrace change, but how fast it's descended upon us. How do we capitalize on change when it's quickly accelerating? And what information do we need to make better and faster decisions? Advanced digital technology and the incredible amount of data we have access to has made it possible for us to thrive. And we know that the standards we've developed have given us consistency, stability, and reliability. Technology will continue to accelerate data collection, compelling us to make better decisions to meet the shifting demands of more informed consumers, and to change, of course, if need be. No one wants to be left behind. There are lots of people who have a vested interest in us succeeding, who depend on us. What we do, the decisions we make, 
and the speed at which we make them impacts all stakeholders. Product suppliers and manufacturers, distributors powering the supply chain, wholesalers and retailers who ready products for sale, hospitals and clinics that deliver patient care, and most importantly, the shopper or patient who entrusts everyone before them to get this chain of custody right. And while we know we have to adapt to the inevitability of change, can we keep up with the acceleration? We have to ask the question Nancy Giordano and others contemplate. Are we up to the challenge if we continue to rely solely on what we've done in the past? On the tried and true methods and processes, the thinking that brought success to many of us. So let's pledge to expand our thinking and continue the dialogue, to collaborate and share ideas, to overcome obstacles and perceived limitations, so that working together we can find smarter, practical solutions and make better, more informed decisions. And not just keep up with the increasing demands of today, but to explore what might be beyond and lead the way.